If you are new to the world of deep learning and want to know about activation functions, which one to use when, this video is for you. I am going to simplify the activation function and discuss about top few activation functions that you must know. Let's see that. We are going to see which activation function to choose when and why. Okay. So basically, if you draw a neural network, right, it will look something like this, where this you can call as your input layer. This you can call as your hidden layer. And this you can call as your output layer, right? So you know this, there is no problem with this. But activation functions, remember, we don't need activation function here. Okay, here we don't need activation function in input layer. Activation function is needed in hidden layer and output layer. Okay, so we are going to understand basically six different activation functions, only six, because I don't want to confuse you by telling you 10, 12 functions. Okay, just remember these six functions and different variants of these six functions only you will use most of the times. Okay, so in this six, three, I will talk for hidden layer and three, I will talk for output layer. So let's start with which functions are important for hidden layer, which you can use here and which functions you can use for the output layer. Now, if you have confusion on what is hidden layer, what is output layer, what is a neural network, uh, that is not in scope of that video, but I'm going to show you the playlist Unfold Data Science. If you go to YouTube and search Unfold Data Science, CNN or anything in artificial neural network, you will get this playlist, artificial neural network and deep learning 15 videos. You can go and see all the basics of ANN and deep learning, okay? So the concepts will be very clear to you. So I'm not going to explain you much detail about what is what, okay? Just the activation functions. So first activation function that I want to discuss here is a very simple and plain activation function. So I'm going to discuss about the hidden layer activation functions first, okay? So hidden layer activation functions. So first activation function that you should remember is known as ReLU. What does ReLU do is ReLU's basic simple formula for ReLU is fx is equal to fx is equal to max of max of zero x. Okay. This is a very simple formula for ReLU. What it does is if you give a negative output input, it will make it zero. If you give a positive out input, it will make it as x. Okay, that is the simple thing this ReLU does. So if I have to write a Python function for ReLU and how ReLU looks in Python, let me show you that quickly because I have I have written a simple, simple function for all the uh, activation functions, okay? So here you can see in the ReLU, right? I'm just writing define rectified. You can think of ReLU. Return the formula that I wrote in text now, maximum of zero and X, okay? So for the range of minus 100 to 100, this is the range I'm taking. In this range, if I pass this numbers through ReLU, then in the output, as you can see, all the number up to zero is converted to zero. Like it is becoming zero on the left-hand side of zero. On the right-hand side of zero, you can see it is X. X means the same number, okay? So this is one of the activation functions that you can use in your hidden layer, ReLU. Now, all the activation function comes with some advantages and disadvantages. So let's discuss those things. What is the advantages and disadvantages of ReLU? So ReLU is basically a simple to use function. So I'm writing here advantages. ReLU is very, very simple as you see, as you saw, it makes all your negative to zero, all your positive as it is, okay? It is simple, it is easy to understand, easy to use, and it does not has vanishing and exploding gradient problem. Now, many of you who is watching Unfold Data Science videos, you may be knowing these concepts, but again, if you don't know, I will just tell you, go to the Unfold Data Science ANN playlist and watch this. No vanishing and exploding gradient problem. Okay, I will write here GP gradient problem, okay? So this is about ReLU. Now, obviously everything comes with some advantages and disadvantages. So disadvantage of ReLU is basically, it has a problem known as dying neurons, okay? Dying neurons. What is the meaning of this is? Suppose if, if your input, basically it is getting converted negative to zero and positive to X, right? So sometimes what may happen is your, your neuron may get totally inactive because everything is becoming zero here, right? Which is negative. So your neuron may become totally inactive. That is, that is known as the dying neuron problem. 
So that can happen in this case. So that is one disadvantage of ReLU. That is the first function that we learned about the hidden layer. You can use that function, okay? I'm just going to tell you about six functions, guys, because I don't want you to confuse. Second function for hidden layer you should remember is known as sigmoid function. What is the formula of sigmoid? Some of you must be knowing a sigmoid formula. One by one plus e to the power minus x, okay? This is a simple sigmoid formula you should remember. Now, how sigmoid curve will look like? Let's see in the Python again, because I have plotted sigmoid also. As you can see here, this is your sigmoid. So whatever I wrote in note now, one by one plus e to the power minus x, okay? So e to the power minus x is nothing but exp, exponential function. The same minus 100 to 100 I'm taking range here, guys. And as you can see, if I'm drawing this sigmoid, right, it looks something like this. So what you can observe from here is, it will limit your output to the range of 0 to 1. As you can see here, I'm giving the input minus 100 to 100. My output is in the range of 0 to 1. So it is limiting my output's range. So remember, the first characteristic of this sigmoid function is limiting the range of your outlet. Uh, sorry, limiting the range of your in output. Limiting range. Suppose you want to limit the range to 0 to 1 for some reason, then you will want to use this function. Another advantage of this is smoothing gradient problem. So here what you can see is, I'm not saying problem, sorry, advantage, smoothing gradient advantage, okay? And then this is useful for binary classifications, okay? So whenever you are doing some kind of binary classification, right? Then this sigmoid function is very, very useful. The reason for that is it limits the number into zero to one. So anything below, let's say one, one cutoff of 0 0.5, anything below cutoff of 0 0.5, you can call one class above 0 0.5, you can call another class. Okay, so that is your uh, advantages of uh, sigmoid. But obviously there are some disadvantages all, also. So basically the one disadvantage of sigmoid and very, very important disadvantage of sigmoid is vanishing gradient problem. So why vanishing gradient problem will come in sigmoid? The reason for that is, as you can see, the output is always in decimal, which is like zero to one, right? So there is a possibility that gradient become very, very small and this problem we can face, okay? That is about sigmoid function. Remember, ReLU sigmoid, you can use in your hidden layer, okay? Why? Because of their properties. The third function I want you to remember in terms of hidden layer is known as 10H, okay? So what 10H does is, first of all, formula as usual. So Fx is equal to e to the power x plus e to the power minus x divided by e to the power x. Uh, in the numerator, it will be negative actually. And denominator, it will be positive. So here it will be negative, okay? And here denominator, it will be positive. Okay, so this is the formula for your 10H. Now, 10H, if I go and plot in the chart, it will look little different from sigmoid. We have to observe the difference, guys. So let me first plot 10H for the same range, minus 100 to 100, okay? So minus 100 to 100, as you can see in the function, I'm saying exponential and then exponential. Same thing that I wrote in notepad now, okay? And then I'm saying like this. So as you can see, it looks very similar to sigmoid, but it is not actually. To show you that, let me limit the range to minus 10 to 10. Okay, so minus 10 to 10 sigmoid and minus 10 to 10, 10H. So as you can see here, guys, you will not see, you will not see this, this portion you can compare here. This portion will look different between these two. So as you can see here, this is a larger jump. This jump here is larger. If you compare, right, this jump is slightly smoother. This jump is little larger, okay? I mean, the step size is bigger, you can say in one way. So how how 10H is different from uh, sigmoid is, 10H is faster to converge, okay? So sigmoid will, will always go smooth, 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 okay? 10H will always not go smooth. It will go a little faster also at times, okay? And it gives a bigger, larger steps, gives bigger gradients and larger steps, okay? So as you can see, larger steps. So I will just go ahead and write here, 10H also comes with all the advantages and disadvantages of sigmoid, but I, I will just write here, sigmoid plus sigmoid 
plus okay what happens here faster convergence faster convergence because because of that steep that i showed you okay faster convergence and then it will show you big learning steps big learning steps remember these th these three functions for hidden layer relu sigmoid and 10h this should do the job for you as i told you in the beginning there are variants of relu for example riki relu etc all these these things you can keep in one bucket of relu only so three functions for hidden layer now let's see three functions for output layer so output layer activation functions so first function i want you to be aware of in this context is something known as linear function okay this is known as linear linear or identity okay so this is a very very simple function it does nothing it is simply fx is equal to x okay so if i go here and i think i have written the code for that also see my linear x is equal to return x this is fx is equal to x very very simple function now you will ask why this function is needed this activation function is needed um, in some cases where we want to learn the you know my output is a regression kind of scenarios okay so as you can see all these mostly used for classification scenarios in output layer suppose in output layer i want to have a regression kind of scenario then i will use a linear activation function okay so very simple very easy to understand whatever you give as input same thing comes as the output nothing fancy here second thing second activation function that i want to i want you to understand for output layer is sigmoid itself okay so sigmoid we have seen here in detail like how sigmoid works and what is the uh, for, uh, formula for sigmoid remember why why i'm i want to use sigmoid in output layer is because it will help me in doing classifications okay because it will limit my output from 0 to 1 so i can give a threshold as i said and i can call everything below that threshold in one class above that threshold in other class so i will use sigmoid in my activation layer uh, output output layer activation function as well okay so uh, that is about sigmoid the second function and third function in the output layer that i want you to remember is something known as i think some of you would have guessed it right softmax okay now softmax function is a little different from all your remaining functions and the reason for that is softmax function gives you a vector of probabilities to your input okay so i am just going to show you how vector of probabilities how suppose suppose this is one input in your neural network okay this is one input and i will call here n1 and n2 node 1 and node 2 from node 1 right let's say here i am measuring the this is my output layer here i am measuring the probability of an observation falling in class 1 and here i am measuring probability of my observation falling in class 2 okay suppose there are two classes i want the probability it can be used for multi class also so to make it simple right let me give here n3 let's say there is another node node 3 here i am measuring my probability of an observation falling in class 3 okay so how this function basically works is suppose if 2 is the input here for example 2 then here my output will be e to the power 2 suppose 3 is the input here and 4 is the input here then e to the power 2 by e to the power 2 plus e to the power 3 plus e to the power 4 and here it will be e to the power 3 by e to the power 2 plus e to the power 3 plus e to the power 4 and here it will be e to the power 4 plus e to the power 2 e to the power 3 and e to the power 4 what i am doing here is i am just creating a vector of probabilities now this will be one number this will be one number and this will be one number suppose this number is 0 0.3 so this number will be 0 0.6 and this number will be 0 0.1 so remember the vector of probabilities of all the sums should be always one so what my softmax function will tell, tell me is the probability of this observation falling in class 1 listen to me carefully guys the probability of this observation falling in class 1 is 0 
the probability of observation falling in class 2 is 0 0.6 probability of class 3 is 0 0.1 okay and based on this i will have probability for all the classes and then i can you know in the output layer i can say that okay this is the probability for this class this is for this class so what this will do this will give you a vector of probabilities now to to see in practice what is the common equation for this just to write it here the function fx is equal to e to the power x divided by sum of e to the power x same thing that i wrote below here okay now if i go to my quick note here my uh, jupyter notebook you can see here i am taking a i'm just giving 12 13 14 3 inputs and i'm just running that through my softmax so as you can see here my softmax is giving me a vector of probabilities for all these by computing in the same way e to the power x by sum of e to the power x okay so here in my note also if i go here and i give the input for example two second input three third, third input four then it will give me like this okay so how softmax is useful it gives me probability of an observation falling in different different classes or different different categories fine now one last thing i want to add here if you are doing a regression problem then you will go for which activation function in output layer if you are doing a binary classification problem binary classification then you will go for which activation function if you are doing a multi class classification multi class classification and if you are doing a multi level classification multi level classification then which one you will go for so let me give you answer here if you are doing a linear uh, regression then you will go for linear if you are doing a binary classification you will obviously go for sigmoid because that will give you probabilities uh, of two classes if you are doing a multi class classification you will go for softmax because we want to see the probability of falling in each of these and if you want to do a multi level classification then you will again go for sigmoid now if some of you are confused between multi class and multi level classification then please comment me that you do not understand this concept i will create a video on what is the difference between binary multi class multi level with some examples okay so remember only these three activation functions guys for hidden layer you will use relu sigmoid 10h depending on the situation for output layer you will use linear sigmoid softmax depending on the situation okay so don't confuse much on the activation function guys this was a short video for that see you all in the next video wherever you are stay safe and take care